points on the week. Well, as many Americans have discovered, buying a computer is somewhat like navigating through a minefield. By one estimate, for every satisfied customer, there are three others left disappointed. A frequent cause, the rapid collapse of a manufacturer that can leave a computer orphaned overnight. Ian Hunter has some suggestions if that's happened to you. Remember this, the Osborne One? Three years ago, it was hot stuff. Now, it's an orphan. And remember this, the bargain price Timex Sinclair line. They're gone, too. People like John Sampson bought them in good faith. Today, help and service are hard things to find. As soon as they dropped out of the market, they dropped all support. Uh, even their so-called 800 uh, fast service number was uh, not very much help. John Sampson was lucky. He found Zebra Systems, started two years ago to cash in on the then boom in Timex Sinclair machines. Today, Timex Sinclair is no more, but Zebra Systems' Stuart Newfeld is still supplying new accessories, books, and software. We buy out now um, leftover stock from distributors uh, so that we can give people actually lower prices. Zebra Systems also supplies an even more important commodity, parts and service. And that can be hard to find for an orphan computer unless you know where to look. The first thing to do, and this is probably universal for all the computer models, is to try and find um, users groups and clubs that have, um, that put out newsletters. Stuart Last, which would be the last name of the person, to M. Last. So, off to Boston and a meeting of the Boston Computer Society's Osborne Users Group, typical of such groups nationwide. It's a natural for Peg Legendre, a businesswoman and college professor, one of 150,000 people who still use Osborne. It's a small business owner. Uh, it still performs the services I needed to perform. Uh, in terms of what's current in the marketplace, one could say in some ways it's obsolete. Uh, Fortunately for the machine, it doesn't know it's obsolete, so it keeps running. In part, that's because of the knowledge Peg Legendre has gained from the Osborne Users Group. Access to public domain software, help with software problems, modems, and printers. And we have just an incredible variety of people doing th different things with their Osbournes, everything from writing the, the notes for the Boston Symphony Orchestra, or written on an Osborne. Um, the uh, gentleman who's involved in anti-terrorist training does some of his database work on an Osborne. Osborne owners, in common with owners of several other orphaned computers, have another advantage. A third party has agreed to provide service support. In Osborne's case, it's Xerox Corporation. At the time that Osborne filed Chapter 11, we bought over $1 million worth of parts of their inventory to um, stock and to repair on their equipment. All well and good, but your aim should be to avoid the problem in the first place. Consultant Richard de Simone says the time to start is before you buy. I think that the larger manufacturers are a much safer bet for the consumer. Um, if I was going to buy a computer system, and I have a few of them, I wouldn't buy anything except one like an IBM. Um, I know they're going to be around. The user base is incredibly large, and it's they're going to be around forever. But what if it's too late for you and you already have an orphan? Well, experts have several suggestions for getting the help that you need. First, try calling your computer's manufacturer. They may be able to put you in touch with a user's group. If that fails, try asking at your local computer store or reading computer magazines. A last resort may be to check the phone book. I'm Ian Hunter for the Wall Street Journal Reports.